Today, I'll be talking about our paper on structural learning from interventional data with unknown targets. I'm Chandler Squires, and this is joint work with Yu Hao Wang and Carolyn Uller. The utility of interventional data for the identification of causal models is well known, allowing one to distinguish between models that would be indistinguishable from just observational data. This has motivated the development of several structured learning algorithms which make use of interventional data, including, for instance, greedy interventional equivalent search and the interventional greedy sparse permutation algorithm. As a simple example, consider a data set derived from the causal model G star, consisting of observational data as well as ge data generated from an intervention on X2. Note that throughout this talk, we'll be using the notion of a soft intervention, which does not require that its target be set to a given value, or even that we cut off the dependence of a target on its parents, which is called a hard intervention. Rather, a soft intervention, or mechanism change, only requires that its target's conditional distribution given its parents is altered. This notion of intervention subsumes the notion of a hard intervention and is more realistic for settings such as biology. Combining conditional independences from the observational data, along with the fact that the conditional distribution of x1 given x2 has changed, we can rule out that x2 points to x1 and obtain a partially directed graph g hat representing the interventional equivalence class. However, we run into problems when our interventions perturb variables that we don't know about. This is typical of applications such as biology. For instance, gene knockout data from gene editing tools like CRISPR is promising for the task of learning gene regulatory networks. But these tools are known to have off-target effects, cleaving at genome sites other than their intended targets. Going back to our example, consider what happens when the intervention on X2 has an off-target effect on X1. An algorithm which checks for invariance of marginal distributions, such as the interventional greedy sparse permutation algorithm, would find that the marginal distribution of X1 had changed and conclude that it must be downstream of the intervened variable X2, resulting in the wrong estimate. We could remedy this situation by first learning the targets of each intervention, but without knowing the graph, this involves exponentially many hypothesis tests. Instead, we opt to learn the intervention targets in the graph simultaneously by treating the interventions as random variables whose children must be learned. In particular, for the kth intervention, we add a binary variable i sub k, which takes value one if a sample comes from the kth intervention and value zero otherwise. We can now view all of our data, observational and interventional combined, as a single matrix with a column added for each intervention. As explained in the paper, joint causal inference from multiple contexts. We can then try to apply structure learning algorithms designed for just observational data. This idea applies to any data coming from heterogeneous domains, not just interventional data. However, to use one of these algorithms, we must be able to incorporate two key pieces of background information. First, since our data depends on the intervention, we need to incorporate an exogeneity assumption that variables don't cause their interventions. Second, since only one intervention variable is non-zero at a time, we know that the intervention variables are fully connected. In our paper, we show that this type of background information can be very naturally incorporated into a permutation-based structure learning approach. These approaches elegantly reduce the problem of finding the true causal structure to finding a correct node ordering. The first main idea is to associate a graph to each permutation of the variables. By taking a special graph, in particular the minimal IMAP, we are guaranteed that the sparsest graphs are those in the correct Markov equivalence class under two elementary faithfulness assumptions. We're also guaranteed that from any starting permutation, there is a path of transpositions to the true permutation on which the number of edges in the minimal IMAPs are weakly decreasing. Thus, a greedy search procedure is consistent. In fact, we only need to consider transpositions of variables that are connected by covered edges, reducing the size of the search space. The search over minimal IMAPs using covered edge flips is called the greedy sparsest permutation or GSP algorithm. To incorporate background knowledge into GSP, we restrict the search space to permutations obeying the exogeneity assumption and ensure that the minimal IMAP for each permutation has a clique on the intervention variables. In fact, since we can incorporate any adjacency information into the algorithm, this allows us to incorporate any known targets of the interventions. For instance, the target gene of a knockout in our example of gene knockout experiments. In our paper, we show that even with these modifications, a weakly decreasing path still exists, so we can use the same greedy search procedure. This gives rise to an algorithm called Joint Causal Inference GSP, or JCI GSP. However, using this procedure as is ends up performing poorly. 
It turns out, in practice, that false negatives when determining intervention targets are quite detrimental, restricting the search space too far and cutting off paths to the sparsest graph. As an extreme example, suppose we have a distribution that is Markov to G star, but has a single faithfulness violation. The marginal distribution of X3 is invariant under an intervention on X1. Then, if we begin at the permutation 3, 1, 2, we'll be missing the edge I1 to X3. This leaves the edge 3 to 1 uncovered, so there are no covered edges and JCI GSP gets stuck. A simple brick fix brings us to our final algorithm, which we call Unknown Target Interventional GSP, or UTIGSP. This simple fix is to consider only non-intervention parents when defining covered edges, now called I-covered edges. In this case, we would still be able to reverse the edge X3 to X1 and get a correct permutation. We see that this modification makes a big difference in practice. In these plots, UTIGSP is pictured in blue and JCIGSP is in red. We also compare to two algorithms which do not account for the possibility of off-target effects, GIS in green and IGSP in orange. We show the percent of interventional essential graphs correctly recovered by each algorithm as a function of the number of samples. We generate five interventional data sets using shift interventions, with each intervention having a single known target. We vary the number of off-target effects from zero in the left plot to three in the right plot. Even with no off-target effects, UTIGSP outperforms the other methods. But the difference becomes even more apparent as we increase the number of off-target effects, since the other algorithms almost always fail while UTIGSP approaches 100% accuracy. If you'd like to recreate our experiments or use our implementation of UTIGSP, you can visit this link to get started. The algorithm, along with other methods for causal structure learning, is implemented in an easily installable Python package called Causal Deck. For reference, the algorithm takes out 20 seconds on sparse 100 node graphs when using partial correlation tests for conditional independence, so it can be reasonably applied to moderately sized problems.